Chris, sir. Um, hi, good morning, Bay. Um, I'm David Friedlander Helm. Welcome, visitors. Um, I teach physics, chemistry, and astrophysics, and I occasionally have computers fail on me. Oh, hey. Um, so I have a little story for you today about how I failed. Um, but really, it's <coughs> <Yes>, classic. <coughs> Do Showed up tell. Thanks, Colin. Um, I failed, and honestly, I wish I'd failed more. Um, so let's uh, jump right into an outline slide because they're important to me. <laughs> Those are astrophysics students laughing. <laughs> yep. So let's talk about total solar eclipses first. Um, total solar eclipses are when, I wrote this down so I get it right, the moon passes between the Earth and the Sun and casts a tiny little spot of shadow on the Earth. And they seem pretty rare, but they happen about every year and a half somewhere on Earth. The most recent one was August 21st, less than a month ago. Um, the next one will be July 2nd, 2019. If you are a Spanish speaker, you should go down to Chile and see it. Um, the next one in the United States will be my sister's 36th birthday, uh, April 8th, 2024. And then there's the 2045 eclipse, and boy, is it never too early to start planning. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, this is so cool. Not my picture. Um, this is an eclipse from Norway over the Seed Bank, if you know where Svalbard is, um, from several years ago. And that center image is totality. And the pictures just don't do it justice. You should do whatever it takes to get to see totality, to go see a total solar eclipse. 99% totality is not 99% of the experience. <clears throat> so last 100 years, next 100 years, here are some total eclipse paths. Um, if you want, if you are around in 2106, you can go to the Friedlander Home Family Home uh, in St. Paul, right next to Minneapolis. Um, you can also visit the Craig Butts Family Home in the 2024 eclipse. Um, uh, you also want to make sure that your eclipses you see are, uh, there are no clouds. So here's an idea of the average cloud cover in the morning in mid-April. Uh, <clears throat> so you should go to the Sonoran Desert, either Central Texas or Northern Sonora. And then here's the eclipse path. Here's a center a little bit. You might recognize some of these California cities. Here's the center a little bit of the California the eclipse of 2045, uh, which is on August 12th. It's going to be about four and a half minutes of totality right here. Um, so I think you should be over here in the high desert on, on or near US 395 because it's going to be dry, it's going to be low clouds, and the high desert is pretty gorgeous. So now to talk about the project, <coughs> Project Rabu. Uh, Craig, Craig Butts, our fearless leader, Craig Butts, decided to launch weather balloons a long time ago. Did the Icarus project, which you can read about in the stairway over that way. Um, and our project, quick summary, we launched four weather balloons to about 20 miles above the Earth. And our goal was to take lots of pictures. Um, <clears throat> we've been working on this picture, this project, for at least 18 months, so I guess since the last eclipse. Um, and he'll be talking to you at a morning meeting, morning meeting later this month about lessons from the project. Um, just to reiterate, our goal was to take pictures. Uh, and I was prepared to be underwhelmed by your imagery. <clears throat> we named it Rahu because we wanted a mythology, and there are very few mythologies around eclipses because they're fairly rare if you stay in one spot. Um, so Rahu is, the, uh, in Hindu mythology, a head, a severed head thrown into the sky that blots out the sun briefly and then continues on. Um, here's me with one of our weather balloons to give you an idea of how big our balloons are. That should be about a meter and a half across. Uh, this is our test in early August. And this image was actually taken by one of our cameras, which brings me to our payload. <clears throat> so here's our payload um, sizes in Imperial. Sorry about that. Um, we have four cameras. The dark red are the video cameras, a little lower quality. The light red over there is a knockoff GoPro, a Yi. <clears throat> and then two GPS trackers in blue, and we're missing uh, uh, antenna off here. This bottom center is a carbon truss, all the rest are strings. <laughs> so what did I fail at? I failed at sewing. I failed at gas volume measurement and thermal effects. We failed to calculate and consider our camera's fields of view. I failed at documenting this process in photos. I failed to turn on my 360 camera during the eclipse. We failed at coding. We failed to consider the limits of our camera's operating temperatures. I failed at <clears throat> predicting the flight path and burst altitude of our balloons. And we failed at tying knots. <laughs> My failures, our failures were important. Without them, uh, excuse me, where I failed and could make a change, success followed. So I'm not going to stand here and beat myself up about all these failures. Um, we're just going to talk about these four. 
So first, uh, this is a picture of our coding. This is a screenshot of our code. And I missed this tiny little octothorpe right here, which you might know as a pound sign or a hashtag. Um, <clears throat> it made that line of code inactive, and I didn't notice what that did to the rest of our code. This was frustrating, but this is a failure that only cost us time. A um, couple hours. Frustration. Real frustration. Um, <clears throat> during our test launch, the Yi, our knockoff GoPro, took this picture. And in this picture, um, you can see that there's this like blurry ring that's ice that formed on, the, on our camera's lens. Um, and also, when we got, got the camera back, it had only used 27% of the battery. So we failed to consider that in the cold, some weird things might happen. So we made it, we grabbed a space blanket, I bought a space blanket, you know, like you see the marathoners grabbing at the end of their races. We cut out, put those little reflectors on the inside of the camera. Um, we gave it a foam coat, and then we spray painted that foam coat black for, wait for it, radiative energy transfer by heat. We should all laugh at that one. We also removed the lens cover so that there was not uh, any ice. Uh, so I call that a success. That's the, the image that we got. Um, on the left, our sisters. In the middle is Mount Jefferson. That is the eclipse shadow coming at 2,200 miles per hour. Uh, and then on this side, to the north, is Mount Hood. I failed to accurately predict where our balloons were going to burst and land, but um, that was the smallest issue of all of them and turned out to have very little control over anyway. So let's talk about the biggest issue, <clears throat> tying knots. This was the most costly by far. Um, we have to start back in the payload to understand. Remember this? So this rope right here was just a loop of string with one knot in it. And right here, where that red arrow points, we looped it around the, the truss and put a couple things in the end. We didn't tie a knot. So when the balloon burst, we think that loop came loose and our two trackers slid off. But we found those trackers. Sad, Craig is sad. But we did not recover the cameras because they separated from the cameras. But we did not uh, recover the cameras because they separated from the trackers. They are probably lost forever in the Oregon backwoods. They have great pictures, probably. And we have no way to know where they are. And I wish that we'd failed at that sooner. Because if we'd failed at that in our test launch, we would have tied a knot there. 90 seconds. Two minutes. And we would have maybe had that payload. What ended up happening, probably, is it came loose, the truss went vertical, and everything slid off of it. But we have no way to know, because our camera that was looking at the balloon is somewhere in Oregon. Yeah, I wish it had failed sooner, like I said. Um, nonetheless, failure is required to be successful. We would not have see succeeded without learning from our failures early. Um, and I would really honestly call this project a success. Uh, let's see, is this my last slide? Yes, yes, remember, extra slides. Um, so I'm going to show you a video. Um, yeah, again, astrophysics students laughing. I'm going to show you a video to show you that it really was a success, except that I don't always get these to work right. There we go. Full screen, full screen, they say. What? Give me a nap. It's a Mac, I don't know how to use it. How do I play? Yeah, you'd think that. I tried that. I'm trying again. I beat it like four times. There we go. So that's the oncoming Eclipse Umbra. And it's right now passing over Mount Jefferson. Watch Mount Jefferson go black there. We were not controlling where our cameras were pointing. It's just spinning around at 87,000 feet. And look, there are the sisters again. Lots of fires. And here's Bob Jefferson popping back out of the eclipse. Craig Butts and very many other people in the area joined the eclipse right there right now. And watch it recede off into the distance. So don't forget, you should fail. You should do it well. You should do it early. You should take lots and lots of notes. Thank you.